What's happening? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. Let's get to the show. Now, the Verizon iPhone 4 reviews are in, and the overall consensus is that the Verizon iPhone beats out AT&T when it comes to making phone calls and having less dropped calls. You'll get the mobile hotspot and unlimited data plan for a limited time, but it still has its own drawbacks. Data speeds for downloads and uploads were significantly faster on AT&T overall, and if you want to use your phone globally, AT&T is a better choice because of its GSM network support. Now, pre-orders for Verizon customers started Thursday, but there's another thing that might make you think twice. According to a PDF memo that Boy Genius Report found on Verizon's website, customers that use an extraordinary amount of data and fall within the top 5% may have their data speeds reduced to ensure that the majority of customers aren't affected by the few. Are you serious? I got two words, bad apple. Now this change hasn't been turned on at the moment, but it exists and ultimately it's not good for us. Also News Corp launched its daily newspaper exclusive to the iPad called The Daily. It's subscription based, the first two weeks are free, after that it will cost 99 cents per week or 39.99 for the year. But the biggest news from the event came from Reuters who spotted a working model of the iPad 2 with a front facing camera at the event. There were no pictures taken of it and Apple declined to comment which clearly means it exists. Photos acquired by 9to5Mac show what's believed to be the LCD part for the iPad 2. It's 10 grams lighter and a millimeter thinner, and that could mean a smaller iPad. I just hope Apple brings back the socks because the iPad Nano ones were way too small for me. What can I say? I have big feet. All right, let's take a break with a how-to for sexing up your iPhone signature. Yep, you heard me right. Take it away, big sexy. Hey guys, Brian Tong here with CNET.com, and if you're bored with the same generic email signature that's included on your iOS device, I'll show you how to sex it up a little with the iPhone Signature Creator. Now, big thanks to Rick Broida for this tip. First up, go to the URL that you see below, and you can do this on your iPhone, iPad, the iPod Touch, or your computer to create your snazzy HTML signature. You can enter in the information you want, like a friendly closing or something important like your name, but here's some tips. If you want icons to show up next to your work, mobile, and fax numbers, leave the label section blank. You also have the ability to check mark what other services will appear in your signature that will allow the recipient of your email to access things like your Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn pages, so just make sure to provide the address that directs them to those profile pages. Plus, you can also set up your signature so they can call you through FaceTime and Skype directly. When you're done, create a PIN number that you can remember. Don't make it the same one you use on your ATM card, and then press Create Signature. Enter in the PIN number on the website that pops up. You'll only have to do it once, but this is really important. Now, before you press Go, add this as a bookmark on your home screen on your iOS device. Then, whenever you want to send someone an email with a killer HTML iPhone signature, you'll be able to do it with the press of your home screen icon. I'm Brian Tom for CNET.com, and that's how you create your custom signature for iOS devices, and trust me, all the ladies will be asking you about it. Use it while... Hold on, guys. Oh, no, no I know you like that signature. Yeah. I've got to tell you, my phone is ringing off the hook after I change my signature. Just saying. Now we've told you all to wait out for the next refresh of Macs using Intel Sandy Bridge processors, but you might have to wait a little longer after a chipset flaw has caused Intel to recall them and delay shipments. So that wait for a new MacBook is probably going to be a little longer. All right, on to the quick bites. Two more Verizon tidbits. Verizon is reminding their employees and family members to put customers first and refrain from buying the iPhone for themselves. And that sounds totally fair if you're the salesperson trying to communicate the user benefits of a phone you can't buy. And in good news, people who own Verizon's Pantech 4G LT modem should be happy since a software update now makes it compatible with Macs. And we've shown you a preview of iOS 4.3 in a previous episode that's only available to developers. Apple recently released the third version of the beta, which points to an official release very soon, as in a couple of weeks very soon. And finally, two Apple stores in the New Jersey area will now be open on Sundays, but for non-sale activities like classes and trainings due to long-standing blue laws that set aside a day for religious observance. The only drawback is that its employees now have one less day in the week for their gym, tan, and laundry. 
fist pump. Uh, uh. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Send us your emails to the Applebyte at CNET.com. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next week for another bite of the Apple. <laughs>